dealing with Demons Volume 2 came out more or less uh, three years after the first volume. So if we start from the beginning, what kind of started the whole process with the uh, two albums? We went in doing uh, with the idea that we we're going to do a double record from the beginning. Uh, we didn't know how exactly we were going to release them originally because we had ideas of releasing them at the same time or six months apart, a year apart. But then when COVID hit, we decided to release one uh, at the beginning of the pandemic and wait to release the second volume until we could start touring again. Where did the idea for a double album come from? Do you remember? Talking in the back of the bu- back of the bus with Dez on tour, just saying, talking about what we were going to do, and he floated the idea of doing a double record, and we just took things from there. It's really it's just as simple as that. Outlaws till the end, uh, Volume One came out in two thousand eighteen. So, uh, in what kind of time span were these? Uh, 19 songs written and recorded uh let's say i think we started writing for it in 2017 like the the minute that we stopped recording outlaws we started writing for dealing with demons did you record the whole thing in one session or how did that work and what are kind of your best memories for recording these songs Yeah, everything was recorded all at once. We didn't go in knowing which songs were going to be on which volume. We just recorded 20 songs. There's still one more song that we haven't released yet. Um, And actually, I mean, it it was probably one of the most fun records I've ever done. You know, I really enjoy working with Steve Ebbets, our producer. And, you know, Neil and Austin were still in the band at that time. And the, the three of us just had a really good rapport with one another. So the four of us being me, Neil Tiemann, Austin Diamond, and Steve Evitz being our producer and myself just being stuck in two different studios together over the course of God, I would say two months. It was, it was a lot of work, but it was also a lot of fun. We, there was never any arguments, any heated debates. It was just, it was just fun. For you, what are these 19 songs about? I wouldn't say they're really about anything. I, uh, you know, when I just write the music. I don't have anything to do with the lyrics or anything like that. By the time that I'm done writing and recording, you know, I, I wouldn't say I throw my hands up, but I'm so burnt out on all the songs that I just kind of pass everything on to our producer and Des and let them go and do their thing. But, uh, you know, it's, I definitely went in the, with the mindset trying to make things different than what we have done in the past. And we did some things on this record as far as production goes that we had never done before. And we had a different producer, you know, Steve Evans had worked with us on the outlaws record, but, um, I engineered all the guitars and bass uh, in my studio here for that album. And uh, Austin and Des were really the only ones in the band that spent a lot of time working with Steve at the time of Outlaws. So when, Devil, when Dealing with Demons came around, um, it was really a full-blown record, you know, produced and mixed by Steve Evitz. And um, I just more or less got to sit back and just be more of a artist rather than being an engineer or co-producer or anything like that. As you said that you kind of waited with this album to release it. So how much are you already thinking about the next album or in what stage might the next album be? I have uh, about four songs that are more or less written. And I know John Miller has, I think, at least three at this point. So we've got a good head start on the next record already, but we won't be going in to record it until sometime next year. Is it uh, already possible to say if if there's a kind of musical direction that you're going with the next one? Too early to tell. So, you know, not everything that I write or, you know, everything that we write as a band ends up being on the record. So 
you know, there's a possibility that everything that's written at this point is not even going to be on the record, but uh, maybe all of it will be on the record. It's hard to say. Too early. Okay, about being an artist, how is your process of writing music? Uh, sit right where I'm sitting right now and uh, get a get a guitar in front of me and you know, sometimes I'll come in my studio and start writing with some kind of an idea of what I'm going for or I've heard something that inspired me to write something in the same vein um, or I, you know, I come in here and I have no idea what I'm going to do and I'll just start playing with my guitar until uh, something sounds pleasant to me. And, you know, sometimes I get stuck and I've developed ways of getting out of writer's block over the years, you know, and some of those things include, you know, just getting up, getting out of my studio for a while. Sometimes I'll put a movie on that I've seen a million times and just watch the movie while I'm playing guitar too. Sometimes for some reason that sparks some creativity. Um, mess around with different effects, you know, rather than trying to write something and then put effects on it, I'll, you know, mess around with my X effects and which has every effect in it known to man pretty much. And just start tinkering with different things and, you know, a different tone will make you write differently. And, uh, yeah, little things like that mess around with pedals. Um, sometimes I'll just put on a, a metronome and, play it you know to a click track at a certain speed to kind of keep me in in the same uh speed of what kind of song i'm going for because you got to be careful with that sometimes i'll write a riff and then kind of put it aside and try to find another riff or write something else to accompany it in the song and when i find it the tempos are so different that it doesn't work together which can kind of work to your advantage next time because now it's like okay now i have a song in a different tempo <laughs> that I can revert to when I want to start writing another song, but, um, you know, just a lot of little things like that seem to, uh, help me over the years, get out of any kind of situation when I have writer's block going on. The tour with Cradle of Filth is now done, but how does the rest of the year look for Devil Driver? Uh, we're about to, I'm sure it's going to get announced fairly soon, but we're doing another tour with Cradle of Filth coming up in October in the in the United States. But I we don't have a a set list of days just yet, but we should very soon. For the end, if we could take a bit of a trip down memory lane, uh, what are the first things that come to mind when you reminiscence on the time you joined Devil Driver around 2004? It was. Uh, pretty life changing experience for me. You know, I went from uh, being a student at uh, the University of Santa Barbara and working at the UPS store. And, you know, just one day, I, uh, one of the guys from Devil Driver was, was uh, or a couple of the guys, Miller and Jeff, were living with me at the time because they didn't have any place to live in between tours and uh he came up to me one night and told me that evan the original guitar player didn't want to go on the european run with them or couldn't and so i offered to go and two days later i was on a plane heading toward gothenburg and then we came home from that we went immediately and uh down to texas to a ranch um it's called sonic ranch it's a very awesome recording studio and started working on Fury of Our Hand. And then once that was finished the the following summer. Oh wait a second. No. I think I'm getting my timelines mixed up. No, I went on the tour with with Inflames in Europe, came home, then we went on Ozfest. And then shortly after Ozfest, we went to Sonic Ranch and recorded Fear of Our Maker's Hand. And uh, we didn't finish Fear of Our Maker's Hand until t early 2005, but everything that I, all my parts were done 
uh, by the end of 2004. So it was, it was a very interesting year. You know, I'd never been on tour before. And the first tour I get to do is with one of my favorite bands in flames in Europe of all places. I hadn't been to Europe since I was 10 years old with my dad when he took me to Germany to visit some relatives. And, um, then <laughs> shortly after that, we got to do Ozfest in 04, which turned out to be one of the coolest lineups. I think Ozfest has ever had, you know, he had the original lineup of black Sabbath. It was the first time, uh, Rob Halford had rejoined Priest and Demi Borgier, Super Joint Ritual, Slipknot, Hatebreed, Lamb of God, Lacuna Coil. You know, it's just uh, Darkest Hour, God Forbid, um, Throwdown. There was just so many good bands on that run. And it's, it's like summer camp. <laughs> you know, you just goes on for about two months straight and you play about every other day and have some shows in between. And I didn't want to go home. I was having too much fun. Your memory of- 